Jim was Jim, and I got, he and I got to be really good friends. And, and, and Jim was the kind of guy who would like to wear his athletic shoes, and, uh, but he was in costume. <laughs> what he did one, one time, uh, Jerry said, uh, Jim, change into your, uh, your, your boots. I'm going to get a longer shot. He said, if you can see my boots, I don't belong in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today is Norman Powell, who's produced some of the greatest Western TV series you've ever seen. The Rifleman, Big Valley, The Westerner, Lazarus Man, and he brought back Big Jim Arnez and the Gunsmoke team to do the Gunsmoke movies. Let's hear it for Norman Powell. Thanks, Rob. How about that? Have a seat, Norman. Great to see you. So it's unusual for somebody to have been involved in so many of those great four-star productions. Dick Powell, your father. Right. And it was probably a wonderful learning experience for you. Extremely so. And uh, it was, uh, I'd graduated from, uh, from college and came out not having, uh, the only job offer I, I had was to manage a theater in New York. and. Uh, <laughs> And I was married with a kid. So uh, my dad said, listen, as, as the uh, son of a DGA member, uh, I can get you into the Director's Guild. Nepotism was in flower in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what in the camera you pointed actors. You know? And I go to work at uh, Review, actually at Studio Center, Republic in those days. And, uh, they, they put, me, put me to work, and I worked for them for a year. Uh, I, ne I never had a day preparation. And uh, there was no second <laughs> second. I, I, I do a wagon train and, and shows like that. And you, you know, you're running your, your ass off is, is what's happening on a, on a show like that. So uh, anyway, uh, after, after a year, my dad offered me a job at Four Star, so I left. Paul Donnelly, who was the head of production, said, I'm going to send your dad a bill for $10,000 for training you. <laughs> <laughs> he never said it. <laughs> but anyway. So How'd that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was true. <laughs> but I did, I, I must say, uh, it was like uh, uh, getting an advanced degree in production in that, uh, in that period, of, period of time. Mm -hmm. What other shows did you work on at Review? I'd review, well, I, I did the, the gamut of the shows. I did all of them, but it was, it was Wagon Train and Restless Gun were the mm -hmm. westerns. Mm -hmm. But I did Bachelor Father and Leave it to Beaver and, mm -hmm. I, and those, those easy shows. Yeah. And, but you go out and do the, uh, the very, very tough western shows with lots of extras mm -hmm. and you're alone. So when you first went to Four Star, what was the first show you worked on? Well, the first show I worked on was uh, Zane Gray Theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was my, my dad was doing that. Was it uh, an episode he was in? He was, he was the host. He was the host, and he also appeared a couple of times each season. Yeah, well, like once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But uh, Picture Business was in a, uh, in a state of some decline at that point in time, and television was ascending. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of movies, like Robert Ryan, guys like that, would, would come in and mm -hmm. do... Uh, oh, sure, you had Barbara Stanwyck, and I think Joan Crawford, uh, so many people did uh, yeah. Zane Gray Theater. The, it was an anthology show that ran for five or six years, I think. Right. And uh, half hours. The, yeah, I, I, that's the first show I got to direct, was, uh, was, uh, was that. And I, I was like 28 years old. Was, you know, was, and, and who were the stars in the ones... The, the, the that you did. Well, uh, Aaron Spelling was the uh, producer, and this was a no no lose situation for him offering the the boss's son this thing, <laughs> and it was uh, Dick, Dick Powell and Don Taylor, two directors. So they figured there's no way I could screw up. I mean, mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, but I must say the the guys did let me do what I wanted Some to do. Some of the other shows show. at, at Four Star because it was booming and it was right at the cusp of the Western. Uh, phenomenon that was going on in the 50s and on into the 60s. Uh, a friend of mine, David Levy, who was a, uh, the head of programming at NBC at the time, greenlit a series called The Westerner. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. uh, with Brian Keith that Sam Peckinpah had created. But I, I used to get calls from him. My, my wife will tell you, at four in the morning, he would, he would call me with various and sundry things. Well, he was such a talented writer, filmmaker, and the West was his passion. The Westerner, which was, like you said, very unique at the time. The reviews were fantastic, but yet it was canceled. Why do you think it didn't work? Uh, because it was not stereotypical, I think, uh, I, and it was rating well. I, I don't understand. I, don't, I, I knew David Levy. I don't know why they canceled his show. Hmm. I, I just don't know. Uh, it, it's a mystery because it wasn't, t uh, it was getting good reviews. Mm -hmm. And it was critically doing very well. And, and he was using uh, some of the people who became part of his stock company. Brian Keith, of course, uh, did uh, the, the feature Deadly Companions, which to me always seemed like the show was canceled, The Westerner, and he had Brian Keith and a lot of these same people. He said, let's, let's take this team and make a feature, and they put uh, Maureen O'Hara in that, in The Deadly Companions. That's his first feature film. All right. Well, he did some brilliant films, and then he did some films that I don't think were very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he was uneven. Another show you worked on at, uh, on the four-star lot was with Steve McQueen, Wanted Dead or Alive, which uh, still holds up great, and so charismatic he was. And he, did he want to be a Western star? Well, he'd come from, uh, he'd come from uh, New York. He was a New York actor, and I, I think he, he had, was capable of being whatever he was asked to be in terms of that. He, he was very, very athletic, he, and he took to that role incredibly. And, uh, you know, I don't think he had ever ridden before, and the, uh, and the uh, Wranglers said that in no time that he was an incredible mm -hmm. rider. Mm -hmm. And he had a, a unique way of uh, uh, mounting the horse. He would do a kind of a standing leap and, and jam one, one right, foot. Like in. Roy, he was watching Roy Rogers movies, I guess, because yeah. that's what Roy did a great mount like that. So, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to try to do that. I, I practiced, but I never got good enough to <laughs> reveal the way I did it. Mm -hmm. Now, what was uh, he like uh, on set? Perfectly professional. Mm -hmm. He, he was there. He didn't. He he, he was uh, the consummate professional. He always knew his his lines. He was prepared to go. He was in good humor. Mm -hmm. He was a, he was an outstanding guy. And and we became friends. Mm -hmm. Did you go motorcycle riding with him? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. And uh, interesting story was in the uh, in the second season. He would ride that motorcycle, and he'd come into the lot, you know, on the on the rear wheel and stuff like that. <laughs> And my dad was concerned that uh, he would uh, uh, he would hurt himself and mm -hmm. to, you know to shut the show down. So in in the second in the second year, they wrote it into his con contract that he couldn't ride the motorcycle during there. Yeah. Now I I didn't know that, and he and I would talk and what have you. And he had a, a Triumph Bonneville, and he said to me, you know, I could sell this to you at a very very good price. This motorcycle. <laughs> And I said, what? And he, and he offered a price that I couldn't refuse. And I, I bought it. The humor of him selling his motorcycle, he couldn't run to the boss's son. <laughs> uh, taking that money. Yeah. How long did you have the motorcycle? Well, I, I had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, after the show was off the air and he was making feature films, did you hang out with him or go bike riding with him after that? No, after, after he left, uh, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see him for years until I ran into him one time. Uh, I was with a, with a girlfriend in a, in a restaurant and I hadn't seen him for 15 years or something. You know, I went on making things and he became the most famous movie star in the world. And, and I noticed Steve was uh, at the bar uh, and he was kind of looking at me. By himself? By himself. And uh, so I finally got up and strolled over and he said, what's the matter, Norm? He said, don't say hello to old friends. <laughs> 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 he sat down and was, was charming and, uh, and I can't believe uh, Glory was going out of her mind. <laughs> <laughs> sitting, sitting there with Steve McQueen. <laughs> yeah. 
So it was an amazing evening. And it's always fascinating to hear about the sequel to the longest running TV series ever made, Gunsmoke. Successful too, there were four or five of them, I think. Um, I was at CBS uh, in charge of in-house productions uh, at, at that point in time. We did uh, Gunsmoke movies with, uh, with, with me as, uh, as the executive in charge of the thing. And I got to know Jim at that. that. Mm -hmm. Then I left, uh, I left CBS in, uh, in 92, brought with it a commitment to do a couple of shows. And so one of the things that we did, and I did as, as producer, was uh, with, uh, two, two Gunsmoke movies with Jerry Jameson directing both and of them. Was John Mantley involved with those two? Mantley did, the, uh, did one of the two that we'd done when I was an executive. Then he, he got ill and had to drop out. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I, I think he was never very happy with me, the fact that I was <laughs> doing that. But uh, the Jim, Jim and I got to be friends, and Jim wanted me to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, so we did. So, and Jerry and I had done a bunch of stuff together. Mm -hmm. First one we did, uh, which I thought was the, the very best we did in Santa Fe, it's mm -hmm. called A Long Ride. Mm -hmm. Jim, Jim at that point uh, was... Jim was Jim, and I got, he and I got to be really good friends. And, and, and Jim was the kind of guy who would, who would, uh, uh, who would like to wear his, uh, his athletic shoes. And, uh, but he was in costume. And, uh, I have photos of that where he's got his uh, big yeah. tennis shoes on and he's Matt Dillon. <laughs> what he did one, one time, uh, uh, Jerry said, uh, Jim, change into your, uh, your, your boots. I'm going to get a longer shot. He says, if you can see my boots, I don't belong in a shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, I know that. I mean, they, uh, John Manley told a story about uh, Jim because he had a war, World War II injury and had a limp. And the limp was getting progressively worse as he got older. And so his stand-in ended up doing so many of yeah, his yeah. scenes if he had to walk across the street. And so when you're saying, if he has his boots on, it's not him. Well, they, they told the stand-in to, to study our nest and get his walk down pat so that uh, nobody would notice the difference. And it's usually from your back. And so the guy did. And they're shooting the scene. And the stand-in, dressed as Matt Dillon, you see him walking across the street, but he's limping. And they go, no, that's why you're walking across the street, because we don't want the limp. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, his name was Ben, and I can't remember his last name. Uh, and uh, he, he, he was an earth mover driver, except when he worked for... And uh, but he was bamboozling. Everybody said, listen, I, I, I've got to get earn more money and get overtime, or, or Jim, you know, it's going to... And he was using Jim. So finally, Jerry and I, I mean, he was making more than the DP, I think. <laughs> when, when, uh, Jerry said, you got to talk to Jim about it. He's getting to, so I did. And Jim said, no, 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 no. no. That's and so I had, went to bed and said, no, we're, we're going south with your, uh, with your salary. <laughs> and and that, that was fine. Mm -hmm. Well, he had the, Arnest had the greatest laugh, and, and, and everybody that I speak with who worked on the series said he, every time he'd walk in, he'd try to crack everybody up, he'd do certain things to, to, to make them laugh, just off camera. Very fond of Jim. Uh, Jerry, Jerry and I stayed in touch with him. We did the second movie with him, then, mm -hmm. that, that one we did in Arizona. Uh, and. Uh, and subsequently, we would uh, we we would have lunch with him like a couple times a year, mm -hmm. always always talking about maybe getting another gun smoke going. Well, we're lucky that you did the ones you did with him because they uh, they hold up and it keeps keeps gun smoke and that tradition alive. Thank you, Norman. <laughs> <laughs>